Hi, I want to welcome you to the bold and beautiful tutorial. If you're here for the first time, I'm Caroline and I run an embroidery and fabric and textile business with my husband Devenda and this is our YouTube channel. This is the first time that we've ever posted a kit tutorial to our YouTube channel. So we're really excited to be able to bring this extra level of tuition to you. Um, so if you have this kit already, you want to stay tuned and follow along and you can pick up at any time and fast forward, rewind, rewatch and follow various techniques that I use creating this kit. As you can see, this kit is inspired by this beautiful, bold and beautiful artwork that Davinda created. And then we took elements of that and we built it into this beautiful circular hoop. The hoop is eight inches. Now, if you want this kit, you can find it on our website. It is wearemadaher.com. On the website, you will find all of the necessary things that you need, the information and how you can purchase this particular kit. Anyways, another suggestion I would say to you if you're going to start this and you're joining us in learning along with me is maybe you want to get yourself one of these hoop stands. It's a great idea. Basically, you can just undo the clamp like so. You take your embroidery hoop with the fabric in it and you just clamp it down like this just makes it really easy. You can um, then have both of your hands free. This little panel just goes under your thigh. I'll show you. There is your little flat piece. I'm on quite a cushioned chair and I'm just gonna sit that under my leg and my hands are free to start stitching. And you'll see I use this throughout the tutorial and it just makes it easier. It stops you getting that awkward um, little wrist cramp when you're holding a hoop sometimes you can start to get a crampy wrist so it just frees up your hands so if you suffer with like arthritis or just getting stiff joints these are a brilliant idea because they just help you. You can sit in a comfy chair with it, you can sit on a hard chair with it and you can switch it about and you can swivel it round. You can also lower the height. We do sell these on our website so they're worth investing in if you do a lot of embroidery. So I don't think we should waste any more time, we should just get started on following me along. We filmed this over a number of weeks so you'll notice there's quite a few nail colour changes. I was trying to coordinate you know with the um the bright colours um, but yes we were just filming and trying to get the best light so that we could demonstrate all of the kit to you and see the process. Some of it is speeded up because otherwise you'd be sitting here for hours so we hope it's really useful and let us know in the comments what you think of this design and if you need any more information you can drop us a message um, if you want to find out if this kit is right for you or if you're a beginner we also have some simpler ideas and kits on our website so go and check it out we'll put all of our links in the comment below okay let's get started do with most of our Madaha kits we rarely ever stitch with six strands and you'll know if you've um, worked with us before that we tend to split this so a DMC is made up of six strands you want to split that so we're going to use three strands. I always try to do this really carefully, put my thumb in, make a bit of a Y, put my thumb in and just separate the threads carefully like so. Make sure that you wrap the other one because you'll want to use this later perhaps. Don't let any of your thread go to waste because all of this thread is precious. So we're going to thread the needle. Like so. And then we're going to also put a little knot in the back. I always do the knot like a quilter's knot. Wrap it around the needle, push it through. If you haven't seen that, head to our Instagram. There's a little tutorial and there's a tutorial on our TikTok how we do that knot. Then we're just going to go in. I'm going to start by outlining the actual shape. So I'm just going to go through. I like to outline most shapes within these bold flowers with a back stitch. 
it just helps to um, support the structure of what you're stitching. Now this back stitch is going to be hidden inside your satin stitch so no one is ever going to see it so it doesn't have to be perfection it's just a rough outline of the shape that you're about to fill with satin stitch. was really exciting to start a new kit. That first bit of needle punching through the linen is just really exciting and just seeing it build up. Now you can begin to do the satin stitch and look how we are enclosing that straight stitch inside the satin stitch so you don't see that straight stitch at all. So it's completely enclosed and it just makes it turn out really well. So we're going to do the same on this section, we're going to back stitch the outside edge and then we'll just simply wrap a satin stitch around it so you're basically enclosing that straight stitch inside and it just really helps to keep it a really good structure and you'll have a beautiful edge to each petal so let's keep watching Now you'll see in this next section that we're doing a satin stitch. So we've back stitched a little bit on the edge there, but now we're going to do a satin stitch which is staggering a little bit. So we're doing different lengths within the satin stitch because we're going to be changing colour and we almost want it to look like the light and shade of a real flower petal. So that's why we do it this way. So we stagger a little bit and then we just add a little bit more and it's very much up to you. This is an opportunity for you to use your artistic license and just to visualize where the shadows and the light and shade might come on that petal. But you can absolutely follow the image on your instruction booklet if you have this kit. But look how now I've come in with this lighter shade and we're going to just do a little back stitch around the edge and then we are going to fill it with the satin stitch again and just build up that colour. So you want to go with this mid pink colour and it's there on your colour guide so you should be able to find the correct colour. Just remember in all of these um, stitches and these petals we're using three strands so if you're using 
the full six strands you are going wrong you need to be using three strands six is just way too heavy for this delicate flower so make sure that you've separated your threads each time and that you're using three strands of your embroidery thread and keep the other section safe while you do this little bit so let's just watch this process and see this flower coming into bloom it's literally like colouring with a needle. It's so fun. Now you're just going to work this small section with this grey colour. Now this might seem an unusual choice in this pink bloom, but actually if you imagine the flower, often certain petals hit the light and they almost look white. So this very pale grey, almost silvery colour is just kind of like the light hitting this certain area of the flower and you'll use it in another small section as well and I picked out this colour because it really reflected the original painting that Davinda had created and um, I just thought it worked really well so just use it as explained in the colour guide so if you go back to the colour guide you'll see the exact colour and the exact section where you should place this light grey and it just actually makes the flower pop. So when it all comes together, it might feel a bit unusual at first, why am I putting the gray in here? But when you see it all come together, it really works. And I think it just helps to understand that you don't always have to use a whole range of pinks for a pink bloom. You can add in these highlights of a pale gray or a white or uh, a dark brown or just use a different sort of color. So let's get this little section completed and then we can move on to another flower. Now we have moved on to this brighter orange bloom. So you've still got the pinks in there, but you've also got these beautiful rich oranges. So we're just working this flower in exactly the same way as the pink one and just use the back stitch and the satin stitch to create this bloom.
So now we're gonna create these beautiful little primrose flowers. So they are done in exactly the same way as the larger pink blooms. So you're back stitching each section and then you're enclosing that back stitch with the satin stitch. It's really important that you enclose it inside and not have it outlining as some people are sometimes mistaken to do. Once you've filled that, I am actually gonna take the thread and put this orange thread to one side and you'll see what I mean. So take that thread, tuck it away to one side and then just come in with your bright yellow. Keep that orange out of the way. And the reason I'm not undoing and fastening off that orange thread is we are gonna use it shortly to create the little highlights as you can see on the other flower next to the one we're working on now. So we backstitch this petal again and then you're gonna use the satin stitch to create beautiful primrose petal. So watch along as you see how this comes together. thread back up so I've just worked it into the center and now I'm gonna add little long stitch highlights on this flower petal so again this is very much up to you how you place these stitches but you're basically just working your way around the flower just to add that little light and shade with highlights in the orange and you'll see from the other flower how this works um, but yeah, just have a lot of fun with it and also just use your thread to highlight even on the little painted areas as you see in the third flower that's just at the bottom of this section. So just keep going around, placing each stitch, little short stitches, long stitches, it doesn't really matter how you do it. Um, and you can make it as full as you want to. This is your opportunity to put your little stamp on it. So here we're just highlighting on the painted area as well um, and it just really helps that flower to just really stand out. Now we're going to add the green stems. This again is just a simple back stitch and each little stem has been highlighted for you to fill in and then we're going to add the little blue of the forget-me-nots. So the way I like to do this is to make a marker at the centre of each petal and work my way round and then I'm just going to build it up, um, stitching on either side of that marker till eventually you've filled each petal. With a flower this small you really don't need to do a back stitch because the petals are so tiny so you're just going to build up around the flower just like so. Now it's time to add some French knots. So I'm doing two wraps of the needle for these French knots and then just pop it through. And you only need one French knot in the center of each forget-me-not. So pull your thread through, take your needle, wrap twice, and then go down into the center again and gently pull it through. Always guide that thread carefully so you don't get in a knot. And we come again, pull the needle through, wrap twice and then go back down next to it. You can rewind this and watch it many times if you're struggling and we also have a tutorial on this on our Instagram and our TikTok channels. The 
filling this purple flower is pretty much the same technique as the pink flowers that we did in the center of this design. So again, just using the back stitch and then filling with satin stitch. Really do carefully look at your stitch color guide because this will tell you exactly what colors go where. It's almost like the roadmap to this embroidery kit. So you'll want to keep that close to hand whilst you're working on this project. So just keep checking back, making sure that you're using the right color. Um, keep using that back stitch. Don't cut corners with this because it really does make a huge difference. See how neat that edge is on this particular petal that I'm working on here. It just creates a lovely crisp finish. So yeah, just keep going with it, working through it, and then you're almost there with this beautiful purple flower. French knots in the center of this purple flower are using one wrap of the needle. So you're just going to come through, take your thread and just wrap it once and then go right back down next to the place where you came in. They're really pretty easy once you get the hang of it. But again, just check back on Instagram and TikTok if you want a little bit more of an in-depth tutorial on this. So we're almost at the final flower of this embroidery kit and you'll see that you can follow the lines really simply here. Um, the petal shapes are pretty clear to follow so you're just going to highlight them with backstitch and we're going to build up from the centre um, and we're going to do some of that staggering satin stitch to build up kind of light and shade of each petal. So you're going to work from the centre and just come out and just build up and you'll see as you follow and watch this how it kind of builds up and makes beautiful shading. So you're going to start with this deeper pink colour and then we're going to change colour and it will just be really effective to see this petal kind of build up. lovely orange colour from your stitch card and just again back stitching the edge and then you're going to use a satin stitch to join back up to that pink that you've done in the centre and the staggering that you've done initially is going to really work well as you just join up the lines with the orange and it creates this beautiful shading pattern so keep watching now we come to one of the most exciting parts of this embroidery kit, this gorgeous little bee. So you'll notice our thread is a lot finer, so we're only using two strands of thread to stitch the little features of this bee. So we're going to just again use back stitch because I've got such a fine thread um, the back stitch is still really useful to keep the shape of the bee so you're just going to stitch around and then fill it with satin stitch and then you're going to use this fine thread to create the little antennas as well stripes of the bee's body. On this little section you don't really need to backstitch because the um, 
you know, the rough edge actually works really well when you come to put the yellow in. So just on these little legs, I have just lessened my thread down to one strand with the very tips of the bee's legs. See how effective that is? It works so brilliantly well. So just use one strand on those little legs and then come in with your yellow to give the bee its statement look. Once you have all that yellow of the bee's body filled in, you can go on to do the little wings. I've just used the light grey colour that you used in the pink bloom flower and it's simple, you just backstitch and then fill the satin stitch. So once you've got your bee finished, you want to take a few other colours of thread and highlight some of the painted areas and you'll see the little blue uh, leafy stems that are dotted around. Look at the instructions for how to complete those and the little purple flowers. But now you are ready to finish off your embroidery hoop. So you want to take a really good sharp pair of scissors. We really love these Fiskars dressmaker scissors. They're super sharp. They're so sharp that you need a little um, case for them. So you want to just cut around the edge. We like to leave about four centimeters, so maybe about an inch um, around the edge of the fabric. So just trim the excess away, just like that. Might feel a little bit daunting doing that, but just make sure you leave yourself plenty to gather in get rid of all that fabric and then you'll turn it around. Take one of your lighter threads, make sure you start at the top where the screw is and just run a simple gathering stitch around the outside of the hoop. It's really easy to do. Just run this, it doesn't have to be neat, no one is going to see it. So just run that round, then you're going to draw it in. So once you're almost there, pull it through, draw it in and then just finish off. Once you get to the end you just want to fasten off neatly with a few back stitches so that it stays in place. And there you have it, you're all finished. Look how beautiful this is. Just admire your handiwork and maybe you want to go shopping for a new embroidery kit with Madaha. Thank you for watching. We hope that you've loved following along on this embroidery tutorial.